The Battle of Beaumont Hamel had decimated the Newfoundland Regiment. Almost all of the survivors had lost someone in the attack, a brother, a cousin, a close friend. It took them five days to bury their dead. Then it was time to regroup and rebuild. The regiment relocated to Ypres in Belgium. It spent two months there digging and repairing trenches. New recruits also arrived from Newfoundland and Labrador, but it was a slow process. Five months would pass before the unit reached 800 men. In October, the men were ordered back to France. Allied leaders once again needed them on the front lines at the River Somme. This time, the regiment was stationed near the village of Goudicourt, about 16 kilometers east of Beaumont Hamel. It was joined by a British infantry unit called Essex Regiment. Together, their mission was to take possession of two German trenches. The first lay just 400 meters from the British front lines. It was known as Hilt Trench. The attack began at precisely 2.05 p.m. on October 12, 1916. As the men of the Newfoundland Regiment left their trenches, the air crackled with gunfire and bursting shrapnel. It came from enemy fire and from Allied weapons. Many men were killed or wounded. Captain Bertram Butler later wrote about that day. Although our attack was only on a front of about 300 yards, it was impossible for one who took part in it to see what went on, except in his immediate vicinity. One platoon of B Company was practically wiped out, but the one on the right hardly had any casualties until we reached the German line. A Company had extremely hard luck, losing all of its officers before they were nearly across. The NCOs took up the commands, however, and pushed the attack home. All ranks were eager to avenge as far as possible our comrades who fell on July 1st. When the men made it to Hilt Trench, the Germans were waiting. The time had come for hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was a first for many of the Newfoundlanders. In the horrible chaos of battle, they had to use their bayonets to kill their enemy at close range. Young men who were just as scared and desperate as they were. Thankfully, the fighting only lasted for about 15 minutes. By 2.30, the Germans had surrendered and the Newfoundland Regiment was in control of Hilt Trench. It was one of the few Allied successes that day, and it was an important one. But it came at a terrible cost. 120 of the regiment's men were killed in the attack and 119 were wounded. About 250 Germans died. Another 150 were taken prisoner. The Newfoundland Regiment maintained control of Hilt Trench until 3 in the morning when another Allied unit relieved it. The men marched back to Goudicourt for some much-needed food and sleep. Their last major involvement in the Battle of the Somme was over. But in only a few short months, they would be part of another large offensive at the Battle of Arras. For the Regiment, that conflict would be almost as devastating as the Battle of Beaumont Hamel. In April of 1917, the men arrived at Manchy le Preux in northern France. British troops had recently seized the village from enemy control. Now they wanted to drive the Germans from the surrounding land. Allied commanders ordered the Newfoundland and Essex regiments to capture a German trench located just east of Manchy le Preux. Then they had to secure Infantry Hill. The hill lay about 900 meters outside the village. It was strategically important because of the extensive view it provided of the region. Zero hour was set for 5.30 on the morning of April 14, 1917. Within two hours, the regiment had captured both of its objectives with only a small number of casualties. But then the Germans launched a fierce counterattack. They swung around behind the Newfoundland and Essex regiments and cut them off from the rest of the Allied troops at Manchy le Preux. The men were surrounded and vastly outnumbered. They fought hard, most only stopped when they were killed or taken prisoner. The casualties were almost as bad as Beaumont Hamel. 166 men died that day and 140 were wounded. The Germans took 153 prisoners. 28 of those men later died in captivity. Soon, Manchi le Preux itself was open to German attack. If the Allies lost control of the village, it would be a devastating loss. The enemy bombarded the area with gunfire. The commanding officer of the Newfoundland Regiment knew that he would have to act fast to prevent an enemy invasion, 
Lieutenant Colonel James Forbes Robertson quickly assembled 21 soldiers from the Newfoundland and Essex regiments who were still able to fight. Then he led them to a trench near the edge of town where they stood the best chance of holding off the Germans. But to get there, the men had to cross 100 meters of open ground that was in full sight of the Germans. As they began their approach, the air came alive with enemy fire. In the end, only 10 of the soldiers reached their target. One of the men was Private Fred Curran. We opened fire on the Germans immediately, and I suppose we successfully created the delusion that we were a large invincible army because they made no strong attack. Then suddenly, our ammunition gave out. On no man's land were machine gun carriers lying amongst the dead and debris, and we got enough ammunition to keep out continuous firing for over an hour. All that stood between Manchi Le Preux and the more than 200 invading Germans were nine Newfoundlanders and one man from Essex Regiment. They held their position for 11 hours. By the time that Allied troops finally relieved them at 8 p.m., the village had been saved and the men who protected it would be forever known as the Manchi Ten. Allied commanders later estimated that if the Germans had captured the village, it would have taken 40,000 troops to reclaim it. After Manchi Le Preux, the regiment enjoyed a well-deserved period of rest and recuperation. Reinforcements occasionally arrived from Newfoundland and Labrador, but it had become increasingly difficult for recruiters to keep the regiment at full battalion strength. The Dominion's population was small, and the war had taken a heavy toll. Even the cod fishery, the mainstay of the Newfoundland economy, was struggling because of a shortage of workers. In the three months after Manchi Le Preux, only 190 men volunteered for military service, and half of those were rejected on medical grounds. Those who did make it overseas were soon thrown into the thick of battle. The regiment fought in Belgium in September and again in October, then at France in November. By then, the tactics of war were changing. The Germans had begun to use mustard gas, and tanks were becoming more and more common on the battleground. At the Battle of Cambrai in northern France, Allied forces used about 100 tanks. The Newfoundland regiment had never before worked so closely with the machines so the men trained for weeks beforehand, learning how to advance on foot behind the rolling tanks. The Allies launched their surprise attack on November 20, 1917. Cambrai was an important supply point for German troops, and Allied commanders hoped to seize control of the area. But to reach Cambrai, troops would first have to fight their way through 10 kilometers of German-controlled territory. The Newfoundland Regiment's assignment was to advance behind the first waves of attackers and capture the St. Quentin Canal and the town of Masnier. Other Allied troops would follow behind them and push on to Cambrai. The offensive began at 6.20 a.m. The Newfoundland Regiment had secured its first objective by 1.30. Then it proceeded to Masnier. It fought all night to rid the town of German troops, and by morning it was almost entirely under Allied control. The regiment was relieved at 2 a.m. on November 22nd. The success did not come easily. 54 men from the regiment died in the two-day attack. Almost 200 more were wounded. Among the dead was one of the unit's best snipers, Lance Corporal John Shywalk from Rigolette, Labrador. He was 28 years old. The regiment didn't have much time to rest before the Germans launched a powerful counterattack on November 30th. The fighting lasted for days. Soldiers engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat and they were shelled repeatedly. 65 Newfoundlanders and Labradorians died before reinforcements finally relieved the regiment on December 3rd. It then entered a much-needed period of rest. By then, the Newfoundland regiment had gained a reputation for its courage and tenacity. It had fought with distinction at places like Gallipoli, Beaumont Hamel, and Manchi Le Preux. Many of its men had earned medals for their bravery, like Lieutenant James Donnelly, who had won the Military Cross at Gallipoli, and Private Stuart Dooling, whose actions at Beaumont Hamel had earned him the Military Medal. On December 17, 1917, King George V honored the entire regiment by bestowing the title of Royal to the unit. It was an award that no other British regiment earned during the First World War. The war had now entered its fourth year, 
No one had expected it to last for so long. The extreme trauma of trench warfare was taking a heavy toll on many of the men. March 22, 1918. Dear Aunt Nell, the war still rolls on and one almost begins to wonder how such a thing as war really is, could possibly last longer than a week at the most, and how the people engaged in it can last for a day of real hard fighting. The war of the older days was at least a fair and square fight, but in these days, unseen people plank shells, etc., down in the unseen four, and consequently both sides just wait and trust to luck. The regiment was once again on the battlefield in April 1918, this time near the French town of Bayeux. It fought there for 10 days until French soldiers relieved the men on April 21st. The regiment suffered 176 casualties there. It was a heavy blow to an already depleted unit. It would take months for Newfoundland to supply enough men to bring the unit back up to fighting strength. So Allied commanders decided to remove the regiment from the front lines entirely. For the next few months, it guarded Field Marshal Haig's headquarters at Montreux. The assignment gave the regiment time to rebuild. In September, it was ready to return to battle. By then, Allies had launched their 100 Days Offensive, a series of attacks against enemy forces that would ultimately push the Germans from France and bring the war to an end. The Newfoundland Regiment took part in several of the battles. On September 28th, it captured some German front lines in Ypres, Belgium. In October, it helped to push the Germans back from the village of Courtrai. The battle almost ended in failure when the regiment suddenly ran out of ammunition. But Private Thomas Ricketts saved the day. He volunteered to double back and get more ammunition. The 17-year-old ran a gauntlet of enemy fire, but he was successful. Because of him, the regiment went on to capture important enemy territory and eight prisoners of war. Ricketts later received the Victoria Cross for his selfless act of bravery. It is the highest award for valor that a Commonwealth serviceman can receive. By then, the war had entered its final stages and the Newfoundland Regiment was relieved from the front lines altogether on October 26, 1918. Hostilities ended about two weeks later when the Germans surrendered and signed the armistice on November 11, 1918. The fighting was over, but the regiment still had to stay overseas for a few more months as part of the occupation force in Germany. Then, the time finally came for the men to return home. The largest draft of returning soldiers arrived at St. John's on June 1, 1919. It was pouring rain that day, but when the 956 men arrived at the harbor front, a huge crowd was waiting to welcome them home. After almost five years overseas, the Royal Newfoundland Regiment had returned to its birthplace. What had begun as an ill-equipped and inexperienced group of civilians in 1914 had evolved into one of the most respected and decorated units of the British Army, and the pride of the Newfoundland and Labrador people. In the coming years, many memorials were established to honor the regiment, both at home and overseas. In Europe, five bronze caribou memorials were built on the battlegrounds where the regiment fought. One hundred years later, they remain a place of pilgrimage for people who want to honor the regiment. Men and women who go there to remember the regiment's victories and to mourn the tragic sacrifices that so many of its fine men made in the First World War. Music